This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. This is Luke chapter 1, beginning at the 26th verse. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Well, we are working our way towards Christmas, and uh, and so we're we're confronted this morning with with moving into these places that are that are very mysterious, aren't they? They take us to places where where oftentimes our logical mind just cannot go. As all of the celebrations, the great celebrations of the church always do, whether it's Easter and the remarkable truth, the bedrock event of the resurrection, or this day as we think about uh, the the annunciation of the angel to the Virgin Mary and the, and the precursor to the birth of Christ at Christmas. This this place that we're taken to, to, to be, have, to have find ourselves enwrapped in a cloud of mystery, knowing that it is God, the eternal God, who interacts with us as humankind to be able to accomplish his purposes. And so he does it uh, with angels who come and bring announcements and, and brings that message to a girl who's 12, 14 years old and to conceive a child uh, without a husband, and, and to this message that even her cousin, who was not able to conceive, is all of a sudden in her old age uh, able to bear a son. It causes you to kind of want to scratch your head a little bit, doesn't it? Just kind of think, how is this all possible? And yet it is in that place where somehow God brings us into this cloud of mystery with this bedrock understanding that it is God's love and his purposes, his redeeming purposes in, the human, uh, in, in human history that brings us to this place. And so, um, so we are left to marvel. Uh, the angel brings this message to Mary uh, that she is the one who has been chosen to be the vehicle of God's salvation purposes, to bring into this world the the King of Kings, the prophesied Messiah. This angel brings um, to Mary that tremendous message. And she says, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. I am the servant of the Lord. May it be to me as you have said. May your words be fulfilled. Wow. Wow. So here's a word that comes from the mouth of the angel to this young woman who had all kinds of plans for herself. 
when she is engaged to be married. She has all kinds of, of expectations about what her life is going to be like. She has all kinds of expectations of starting a family and all of the things that that's going to mean for her family and her community and what it's going to mean for Joseph and all of the important things in her life. And then all of a sudden, there's this word that comes to her that is going to completely change where it is that she's going, completely undermine all of her very understandable and wonderful expectations about her life, and it's going to take her in a completely different direction. And it's going to cost her. And she's willing to say, sign me up. Let it be to me. I understand that we're men and women here, um, so this may take a little bit of imagination, but if you put yourself in Mary's place, and this word comes to you from God that he's calling you to do something that is going to radically change your life. You have all of a sudden, you've got all of your plans, all of the things that, that have been laid out for you. You're excited about them, ready to go there. And then all of a sudden, there's another opportunity that is laid in front of you. You don't know where it's going to go. You don't know what it's going to cost. You know it's going to hurt. Do you say yes? Do you say... I'm a servant of the Lord. May it be to me, as you've said. Scary. And if we're honest, we wrestle with it. I oftentimes play in my mind uh, that there's another girl named Agnes. Uh, and the angel first goes to Agnes and says the same thing that he says to, uh, to, uh, to Mary. You know, here's a, a message of tremendous joy, of, of, of great power. You are, you've been chosen to be the vehicle of God's grace and the one that you will bear. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the one that you will bear um, will be the, the Son of God and the, uh, and the King of all creation. And, and Agnes just says, You know, I've got a lot of stuff going on here. Lots of plans for my life. I don't think so. So we never hear about Agnes. <laughs> Do we say yes to that kind of an invitation? Do we say yes to an opportunity that is given to us in spite of the fact that it's scary and that it will change our lives? Do you know the name um, Ronald Wayne? Ronald Wayne, I'd never known that name. Um, so back in 1976, um, he was a friend with Steve Jobs, you know that name, and Steve Wozniak, right? And together, um, those three men uh, were the founders of Apple Computers. Uh, they worked in, uh, in that famous garage. Uh, uh, Ronald Wayne was the guy who wrote the first partnership contract. Um, he wrote uh, the manuals for the first and the second um, generation of Apple computers. He designed the first logo for Apple computers. Uh, they were partners together. He owned a 10% stake in the company. And then uh, Steve Jobs, they had a conversation together, and Steve Jobs made the, they made the decision uh, that he needed to go out and to borrow money in order for the company to grow. And Ronald Wayne got cold feet. And he decided that he really thought that this was the time that he needed to part ways with Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. And so he uh, sold off all of his stock. Uh, at that point, it was a grand total of $800 and went his way. It's been called uh, the most expensive blunder in the history of American business. $55 billion that stake would be worth now. Why? The opportunity of a lifetime in front of him. But he got cold feet. He was scared. He'd been burned. He'd been burned by a prior business arrangement. Uh, he had, uh, had been part of a venture capital plan that went bad. And so his, some of his creditors were still, um, were still nipping at his heels. And so he felt like, after having gotten his hands slapped, um, he was going to play it safe. But what a missed opportunity. Did you ever kick yourself over missed opportunities? The things that you wished you'd done in the past, and now, you know, everything's plain and clear. Now, all of a sudden, 
You wish you'd been a part of it. Mary faces that fork in the road in her life. This young gal and this choice, this opportunity comes before her to pursue what she knows is secure, what every young woman would want, what every young, the family of every young woman would want for her. Or all of a sudden, now to take this other path that was shrouded in mystery and in shadow. Scary. And her response was, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me as you said. Yes. 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 And so that young woman, for all of history, that young woman has become the hero of the church. And that little voice that was probably quivering roared through the history of mankind. She becomes our heroine. And she paves the way for what it means to live a life that is not wrapped in security, but is wrapped in faithfulness. She hears the word of the angel that God's word does never fail. That where God asks us to go, He will never abandon, but He will always stand firm. He will always have our back. He will always support us. We will always be at the center of His purposes. He will always see us through. Even if we cannot see the future, He holds the future in His hands. And He holds us with tender love. Knowing that there is a sacrifice to be made. Knowing that it may be painful. Knowing that other people may question our motives. He calls us to take a step of faith and trust in Him to make what we know to be the right decision. I suppose it would be comfortable if this was just about Mary. But Mary really is the mother of the church. And her story becomes our story. And so the same question that she wrestled with comes to each one of us every single day because God, this God, has not stopped speaking. This God continues to speak to the descendants of Mary ever since this encounter 2,000 years ago and before. God speaks to us through Scripture. He speaks to us through the relationships that we have. He speaks to us through nature. God's voice speaks to us inviting us, presenting to us this opportunity to step into his kingdom and to see his kingdom grow in our lives and in the lives of others. But it's scary. To take that step may mean sacrifice. It may mean it takes us to places or, or we risk things that we wouldn't normally want to risk. And so then the question that Mary asks for us is, um, so where is God calling you? as we move into the Christmas season, where's God calling you to make a choice for his kingdom? Where is God calling you in the back part of your mind? You know there is a place that he's calling you to go. You know there's a decision that you're waiting to make. You know that there is... A, a, a hand of some kind of compassion. There's, a, there's a, an outstretched word of encouragement. There is a, a need to be involved in some place that you'd rather not go. But you know that there's a prompting by God for you to go there. What would get you to say yes to God's calling? What would get you to that place of being able to say, I'm the Lord's servant. Sign me up. Let's go. Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, was a famous uh, Lutheran pastor uh, during uh, the time of the rise of the Third Reich and Adolf Hitler. 
Um, he had been a, a theologian, a preacher and teacher of some note, and then uh, suddenly the rise of this very destructive and ugly party that threatened to take over German politics. He, uh, as part of his studies, he came to the United States um, and, uh, and studied here. He was in London pastoring a church, and there were numbers of people who were encouraging him to stay out of Germany as so many of the, uh, of the, of the intelligentsia of Germany were leaving. He wrestled with that. He had invitations galore to stay out. But he heard that call to go back to Germany and to work with the underground church to be able to raise up a generation of leaders who would pave the way for the day after all of the clouds dispelled. And so he went back and it cost him his life. But Mary was his hero. And he saw in Mary someone who was willing to see that, that God wasn't with the powerful and the successful and with the places that the world oftentimes you know, uh, 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 praises because of their success, but that God comes to us when we are willing to be stripped of those things, when we're willing to allow them to be set aside because we see something that's more important that God is doing in our lives. And we're willing to say in that moment, as those choices come, yes. So, Lord, yes, I'll go. I don't know what it means, and I don't know where it leads, and I know it's going to hurt, and yet the opportunity to be your servant in this place, the opportunity that is out there, that it can mean for my life and others, the opportunity, what it is that you could do in this place is just beyond description. It's beautiful. But in order for me to do that, I've got to become humble and lowly, and make the tough choice. And so uh, Bonhoeffer, in uh, his sermon on this Sunday um, in Advent, preached about Mary, and he says these words. Um, where the understanding is outraged, where human nature rebels, where our piety keeps a nervous distance, there, precisely there, God loves to be. There he baffles the wisdom of the wise. There he vexes our nature, our religious instincts. There he wants to be, and no one can prevent him. Only the humble believe in him and rejoice that God is so free and grand, that he works wonders where man loses heart, that he makes splendid what is slight and lowly. Indeed, this is the wonder of wonders that God loves the lowly. God has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. God in lowliness. That is the revolutionary, the passionate word of Advent. Where are you on this day? Where's the call that God has for you? How is it that God's speaking to you on this day? And what's your response? It's scary. But the opportunities life-changing. And as we make those decisions, we can look back and marvel at what it is that God has done. And as we make those decisions, to be able to hear the voice of Mary in our hearts roar. Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be to me as you have said.